Hello scrappers. I'm gonna start a new project today. Uh, I'm gonna try and extract some silver from some brazing rod. I've got about a pound of brazing rod right here. So this is 15% silver rod so there should be just over two troy ounces of silver in this pound of rod. So what I my goal today is to get at least one troy ounce of silver out of this. I'm not going to do the the whole stack of rods right now. I might actually need to do some brazing, so I'm going to keep some. So just going to do about half of it, maybe not quite half of it. I just need a little over 200 grams of brazing rod to get a troy ounce of silver. Let's see, there's a little over 31 grams in a troy ounce. So let's see, 31 grams in a troy ounce. So uh, 31... 0.1 I think it is divided by 0.15 for 15 percent so I need a little over 200 grams of brazing rod to get uh, 207 to get a troy ounce I may go a little higher just to allow for any losses in the process so I need 200 uh, 207 grams of this stuff maybe a little more <clears throat> now up front I'm going to say it. This is not an economical way to accumulate silver. Not at all. The manufacturers of this stuff charge an outrageous amount of money for it. Considering it's only 15% silver. If you get your silver this way, you're paying triple, quadruple what the value of the silver is. So this is not at all economical. Unless you can get your brazing rod essentially for free like I happen to in this case. Or, if say, you're in the refrigeration or air conditioning industry and you do a lot of brazing and you just keep your, your ends of your rods and let them accumulate, then it might be economical. But uh, unless you can get this stuff really cheap or for free, this is not economical. And there's a story how I got this stuff, I'll tell you as we go along. So, I need to measure out a little over 200 grams. i got my big scale out because that's a little above the limit of what my little scale will do. Let's see, we're on pounds. Let me put it in... Uh, there we go. Now it's in kilograms. Okay. So there's 190. We're most of the way there already. 200. 220. I'll tell you what, I'll throw one more on just so we've got uh, a little bit of cushion. We'll go 230 grams, that should give me well over one troy ounce of silver, which is what I'm looking for. And I've still got, oh, about that much rod left in here. I can either do this again in the future or hang on to it in case I need to do some brazing. Okay, so next step is I need to cut this stuff up and get it in a beaker so we can uh, apply some nitric acid to it and dissolve the copper out of this. So this is, uh, like I said, 15% silver. It's 80% copper. And the remainder is phosphorus. So I don't know what's going to become of the phosphorus in here. Phosphorus is a pretty reactive element. So I don't expect it to just, you know, accumulate in the bottom of the beaker. I expect it's going to form probably some sort of phosphate with either the silver or the copper. Um, that's probably going to be an insoluble material. So we'll probably have some mud at the bottom of the beaker. Uh, hopefully we're not going to lose too much of our silver that way. This is an experiment though. So I don't know what we're going to get. So that's why I went with a little extra just in case we uh, we lose some here. Um, also, you know, not only, said, not only is this stuff incredibly expensive and an inefficient way to get silver, um, we're going to have to treat this with nitric acid and dissolve away all the 80% of copper. And the nitric acid is not free. Well, even, this, even when I make it myself, it's not free. I still have to pay for the, uh, the reagents and the electricity and, and hey, sign a little reasonable value to my own time. 
So there's not an inconsiderable cost to the nitric acid involved. This is really not an economical way to get silver, okay? Less you can get this stuff essentially for free. So how did I get this stuff? Well, I have a relative in the business, but that's not how I got this. Although I may talk to him about saving his rod ends for me. He might do that. Um, I just cannot pass up a yard sale or garage sale when I'm driving down the road. I always have to stop and look. And my favorite kind of sale is a breakup sale where the woman has thrown the guy out and she's selling off all his stuff out on the curb for pennies on the dollar. She doesn't care what she gets for it. She just wants it gone because she's mad at the guy. Um, over the years, I have rolled up on a few good breakup sales and have acquired a lot of equipment dirt cheap. You know, one time I got an air compressor for next to nothing. Uh, another time I got a bunch of uh, brand new in the box industrial motors for next to nothing. You know, she's like, oh, give me, give me a couple bucks a piece, but I'm not going to help you move them. I said, I think I can figure out how to move them myself. And I resold them at just an outrageous profit. Um, I've gotten audio equipment, all kinds of tools. And at one sale, I got this stuff. I don't think I paid a buck for it. I think I've got 50 cents for uh, a pound of brazing rod, 15% silver. The lady didn't care. She just wanted it gone. I think actually selling off the guy's stuff for pennies on the dollar, you know, knowing it would piss him off was probably her goal. So, those are the best kinds of sales, the breakup sales. So, if you can find those, you're going to do well. But, it's a cautionary tale, guys. Treat your ladies right, or that's what's going to happen to your stuff. It'll be sitting out in the driveway, getting sold to passers-by for pennies on the dollar. If you piss her off enough. So, you know, be good to your ladies. So let me get the rest of this cut up, and we'll start treating it with some nitric acid. Now, as I said, uh, the nitric acid's expensive too. Now I have some old nitric that's been laying around, it's starting to turn orange, I need to do something with it. So uh, this is as good a project as any for it. Use it up, and uh, get some silver in the process. Okay, there we go. All right, let me move this into the fume hood, move the camera, and we'll get started. Moved into the fume hood. So, there's a lot of copper in here that needs to be dissolved, and actually a fair amount of uh, silver too. So, um, it's gonna take a lot of nitric acid. I have some old nitric here that's starting to turn yellow. Like I said, I have a, another bottle or two of that. So, should be enough to get the job done. Um, I'm going to put some uh, distilled water in here. It's enough to cover pretty much the, uh, the brazing rod. Uh, give, the, give the metal salts are going to be created somewhere to dissolve into just so it doesn't, the solution doesn't get so concentrated with metal salts that more can't dissolve in it and the reaction slows down. So start with the distilled water. Gonna hit it with some nitric acid now. Should be, even though this is all cold, it's actually quite chilly out here for Florida. So even though this is all cold, we should see pretty much an immediate reaction. Give it oh, 100 milliliters or so of nitric acid. Oh yeah, there it goes. Immediate bubbling. Actually starting to turn green already. Blue-green, yeah. Alrighty. And we should start evolving some uh, brown-orange fumes here pretty soon, so I'm going to turn the fume hood on here in a second. But before I do, so I don't drown myself out, I have a theory 
and we'll see if this is true or not. Uh, it's going to take a lot of nitric acid to dissolve all the metal in here. Oh yeah, I'm starting to get some fumage now, see? Um, it's going to take a lot of nitric acid to dissolve all that metal. Now the copper is a lot more reactive than the silver, so I'm thinking that in the beginning we're just going to be getting copper into solution. Any silver that gets dissolved is immediately going to cement back out on the copper that's left in there. So I'm going to put the nitric acid in in doses and I'm going to test periodically the solution to see if we have silver in it. If we don't have silver in it, I will dump off the spent solution and then start over with fresh distilled water and nitric acid just so we can get the silver solution as concentrated as possible and we don't have all of the copper in with it too. Now this is a theory. I could be wrong. You know, just from what my understanding of inorganic chemistry and the reaction series of metals is. We'll see. So this is going to take a while. Uh, let it cook. Let me get the fume hood going. And we'll start venting those uh, orange brown fumes out into the field over there. Away from my delicate lungs. And uh, we'll just let it go. And let's see what time is it. It is 11.23 a.m. We'll see how long it takes for this to go. You know what? If I put a little heat to it, it'll be even quicker. We turn the fume hood on. Low, not too hot. Don't want to boil it because nitric acid has a pretty low boiling point, so don't want to boil it off. I want to keep it all in there so it can do its work. But it'll work faster if it's warmer. So, hot plate on low, 11.23 a.m. We'll see how long it takes for this to work through the first batch of acid I put in. It's been about 20 minutes. Uh, things have warmed up. Got a really, really vigorous reaction going on in there. So it's cooking along nicely. I'm just going to let it go. All right, it's been a little over an hour. The reaction has really died down a lot. And uh, I'm about to add some more nitric to it, but I want to show you something first. I was going to wait and do this test later, but I'll show it to you up front. This is tap water. Tap water has some chlorine in it. And if I add any silver nitrate to tap water, I'm going to get a, a, a cloud of uh, silver chloride form. So we'll see if there's any silver in here. Pardon my arm in front of the camera. Got a pipette full of the blue liquid from in there. And what we have is a pretty much clear blue liquid. So we're not getting a big cloud of uh, silver chloride forming in here. So the silver is not going into solution yet because there's still copper in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another shot of nitric acid in it and we'll let that go and then I'll test it again. And if there's still no silver in it, what I'll do is I'll decant off the, all of the copper salts in here and uh, we'll start over with fresh uh, distilled water and nitric acid until we start seeing some uh, silver go into solution. You won't start seeing the silver go into solution until the copper is pretty much gone. So hit it with another dose of nitric acid. Not quite as much as the first time. Oh yeah, look at all that bubbling. There, it's been just like two minutes since I put in that second dose of nitric acid and you can see how vigorous the reaction has gotten in there. We're dissolving some metal now. Alright, it's been a little over an hour again. Uh, the reaction's pretty much died down. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to test the liquid. Here's some more tap water. So if there's any silver in there, we should get a cloud of silver chloride in here. liquid is still crystal clear just light blue so there's no silver in here yet 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour off the liquid that's here because it contains a lot of copper dissolved in it already. And we'll just get rid of that copper and we'll start over with uh, fresh distilled water and nitric acid and we'll continue dissolving things. Mainly just steam coming out of it. There's no real fume production anymore. And as you can see, we really haven't dissolved away that much of the rods yet. But what I do see is that the rods are got a sort of a, a white coating on them. I'll bet you that white coating is silver. It's cemented out of solution. There's also some sort of mud down in the bottom. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's the uh, phosphate stuff I was talking about up front. So the phosphorus has got to be going somewhere. Let me set that aside. Uh, let's see, that's tap water. I don't want to make that mistake. So we'll put some distilled water in here. And we'll put it back in the fume hood, and we'll hit it with some more nitric acid. Okay, here we go, back in the, uh, in the fume hood. Let's get my leather gloves off. More nitric acid going on it, and this is, well, this shouldn't be warm, so I'm not expecting a rapid restart of the reaction. It's going to have to warm up a little bit since I put some cold tap water in there. Okay, and we will just let this cook. Now oh, there it goes, starting to bubble again. A little bit of a delay because things are cool, but it'll warm up again, back on the hot plate. So we'll just let this cook, same as before. Um, probably give it a couple of shots of nitric and uh, test the liquid. Uh, it looks like we haven't really dissolved all that much of the rod yet, so this may carry over into tomorrow at the rate things are going. We'll see. But probably got enough time today for a couple more shots of nitric. Maybe one more change of the liquid. We'll see. And uh, see when the silver starts appearing. Once the silver starts appearing, not changing the liquid out anymore. Want to keep all the silver. Oh yeah, it's a few minutes later. Things have warmed up. We're cooking good now. You see the orange fumes coming out of there. This is why I built fume hood. Take that stuff away. Even working outside. You know, it's it's hard to stay upwind from it when that much fumage is being produced. So, you know, there's just no safe way to work around it unless you can get rid of those fumes. Okay, things have kind of slowed down again. It's been a while. Um, I must have put in more acid in that uh, third edition of acid than I thought, because this is it's been it's been like an hour and a half, close to two hours. Let's have a look. It's actually still a little bit of fume production, so it's still going on in there. Got some more tap water here. Oh, okay. So I hope that's showing up. Now we have a white cloud in here. So the silver is actually starting to go into solution. So we can't change out the liquid anymore. We're going to have to uh, go with this. Let's see how much metal's still here. Oh. It looks like a lot, but I'll tell you what, they've got a lot thinner. They are a lot thinner. And they're flexible. I'm bending them with my glass stirring rod. Okay. So they're really starting to dissolve in there. So that's good. Okay, um, I'm thinking I'm going to give it one more shot of acid. Uh, I got my other bottle of acid out in case I need it later. But I'm going to give it another shot of this and um, we'll just let it sit for the rest of the day. It's getting late in the afternoon. And uh, we'll come out tomorrow and see what we got. It may need more acid then. But hey, the silver's starting to go in solution, so that's good news. A little bit at a time here so I don't get a boil over because it's hot. Okay. And we will let that go.
and we'll probably see you back here tomorrow. Okay, it's the next morning. I left this on low overnight, and I've been probing around in here a little bit with a stir rod. There's a lot of gray mud in the bottom of this beaker, but there's also uh, still some rods ends in there. It's not completely dissolved. I suspect that gray mud is some sort of phosphate that's been created. But uh, since there's still some, some rod left in there, I'm going to give it another small shot of nitric acid and let this cook for a while and just see if we can get all of that rod into solution. I'm not going to put a whole lot in because I don't want to have a lot of extra nitric left in here after the last of the rods is dissolved because it's kind of like um, a solution of gold. You know, I'm going to want to get the... Uh, I want to want to get the silver back out of here. I'm going to cement it onto copper. But if there's a lot of excess nitric in here, um, it'll just start attacking and dissolving the copper when I put it in there to cement out the silver and nothing will happen. So we'll let this warm up and see if we uh, get any more reaction out of it and see if I can get any more of that stuff in the bottom dissolved. Well, it's been a couple of minutes since I put that uh, shot of nitric acid in there. We've got some bubbling going on, so yeah, there's still some metal in there that needs to dissolve. Alrighty, it's been a couple hours. Kind of got busy with stuff here around the farm. Um, I put another shot of nitric in it off camera just because I stirred it up and I could see there were still little bits of metal in there. But uh, there doesn't seem to be much more reaction going on. There's a uh, fairly thick layer of gray mud at the bottom, which I think is some kind of phosphate. And any bits of metal left in here are probably buried under that mud and not getting good contact with the acid. I've stirred it a few times, but that doesn't seem to help. I think I'm going to call it and say it's done. So what I need to do next is make sure that there is no um, excess nitric acid in there. So I'm going to hit it with some sulfamic acid here and use up any excess nitric in there. I'm going to put it in just a little bit just so we don't get a big boil over if there's a lot of excess nitric acid in there. Wow, that's like nothing. That leads me to believe there might still be a little unreacted metal on the bottom if all the nitric acid is gone. I'll put in a little more though just to be sure. Yeah, I'm not really seeing any reaction. So there may be a little bit of unreacted metal in there. I'm going to have to filter this liquid. I can always pull the little bits of metal out of the filter and keep them for another time. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn the heat off on this, let it cool down a little bit, and get set up for vacuum filtration. And uh, filter out this crud in the bottom, whatever it is. And then we'll have a nice clean liquid that we can uh, cement the silver out of. Alright, it's time to filter this pretty blue liquid, get uh, that mud out of the bottom, whatever it is. I'm going to do vacuum filtration just because it's so nice and quick. Because I'm sure that mud, whatever it is, will clog the filter and slow things down. So the vacuum will speed things along. Just because I'm impatient. I get people telling me in my comments that gravity filtration's better. Well, better if you got all month, I guess. I don't. Other things to do. So here we go. This should go pretty quick until we get down to this layer of mud and start plugging up the filter.
be interested to see what this mud looks like once I get it in the filter. This is really a rich blue color, so there's still a lot of copper in here, even though even though we took that first batch of liquid and, and just decanted it off when there was no silver in it yet. There's still a lot of copper here. Alright, this is going to take a little while. You don't have to watch it all. I'll show you the end result. Alright, I hope that's showing up. There's uh, some bits of rod left in there underneath the, uh, the mud that was at the bottom of the beaker just as I was afraid of. Whatever that mud is, I suspected some kind of phosphate. Whatever it is, was preventing the acid from getting to those bits of rod. Let me wash some of the mud off of it. Yeah, so there. So there's actually a fair amount of metal left in there. Huh. I wonder if maybe I should uh, hit this with a little bit more nitric and see if I can dissolve some more of it. And then uh, put the rest of it through this filter. Or maybe a clean filter since this is starting to get awfully slow. Let's see if I can wash some more mud off of it. Without washing a lot of the metal out of here. Whatever that mud is, it's pretty dense. Alright, I just let this sit here and filter because the filter is pretty clogged up with that gray mud now, so we'll just let this go. I'll put this in the fume hood, put a little more distilled water on it, and a little more nitric acid. Wash stuff back down into the beaker here. And we'll see if we get that last little bit of metal to dissolve. So here's what this mud looks like. If anybody has any ideas what it might be, hit me up in the comments and uh, give me your opinion. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to wash it slowly and gently until I get the blue color out of it because that blue color is copper, but as long as there's copper in it, I'm sure there's still silver in it, too. So I'll just wash it until uh, the liquid runs clear down here. In the meantime, I've got the, uh, the residual metal in the beaker back in the, in the fume hood on the hot plate, warming up again with some fresh nitric on it. Okay. I know I invited your opinions in the comments about what that mud was. And I know somebody's going to say it's silver chloride. Well, it's not silver chloride. Number one reason was it didn't darken. I left it out in the sun for like a half an hour and it didn't darken. This is silver chloride. I took a little bit of the liquid out of that flask after filtration and um, put it into a little bit of tap water. I got a white cloud. It's been sitting out here for maybe five or ten minutes and look how dark it's gotten. Silver chloride darkens on exposure to light. It's not even in the direct sunlight, it's in the shade and it's darkening up like that. The mud did not darken up like that. Okay, I took what was left in the bottom of this beaker which was a little bit of metal and a lot of mud. I put it on the hot plate, I put some more distilled water on it, and I put a little more nitric acid on it, the last of the bot this bottle of nitric acid. Not only did all the metal dissolve, 
but the mud in the bottom has gone back into solution. Ah, it's disappeared. There was a lot of mud in there. Now there's nothing. So I scraped all the mud out of the filter. I put it in this beaker. I put a little distilled water in it. This didn't even go on the hot plate. And I put some nitric acid in it and almost all of the mud has dissolved back into solution. So you inorganic chemistry geniuses out there, figure out what that is and let me know in the comments. Now remember, this stuff had 5% phosphorus in it. I'm pretty sure phosphorus is involved in making this mud whatever it is. It, it can't be silver chloride because number one, it doesn't darken in the sun. And number two, there's no source of chlorine here. All I've used is distilled water and nitric acid. That's it. So there's no source of chlorine. So, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's gone back into solution. Yeah. In fact, this is almost completely dissolved now. And there was a lot of mud here. There was a solid quarter inch of mud in the bottom of that filter. I scraped it all in here, and it's all dissolved again. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, also, I got to thinking, when I denoxed this, I got to thinking, maybe I shouldn't be using sulfamic acid. Now, we had mud before I denoxed it, so I know that wasn't the cause of the mud. But I know that sulfamic acid will react with uh, nitric acid to make uh, sulfuric acid. And I know that silver sulfate is pretty insoluble. So I decided um, in the future, if I do this reaction, I need to denox this probably with urea. It's not the ideal way to denox stuff, but at least it won't make any kind of insoluble precipitate, which at the moment we don't have. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, there was a lot of mud in here. There was a lot of mud in here. I'm kind of dithering about whether or not to uh, add this. To our nice clean filtrate here or not to uh, run it through the filter and get it in there because I don't know whatever that was it might come back out of solution in here and contaminate the silver we want to get so I don't know but I know there's still a, lot, a fair amount of silver in here because there was metal in here that dissolved so I guess what I will do is I will filter this into here and I don't know what to do with this. Obviously it has a fair amount of copper in it. Maybe it's a copper phosphate that was formed and not a silver phosphate. That would be nice because uh, that would mean a lot of silver wasn't lost. Okay. Just so I get this done today, I'm going to filter this into here and I'm just going to leave that sit for now and think about it. Okay, here we go. But before I filter this, I want to show you something. Um, I took a sample of this and put it in tap water. Very, very light cloud formed. There's not a lot of silver in here. I took a sample of this, put it in tap water, got a pretty heavy cloud which is already starting to turn black. So there's a lot of silver in here. So I think my decision to filter this into here is good, but I'm not going to bother putting that in there. I don't know what that is, and I don't want to contaminate my silver. So. All right, here we go. I'm a little bit worried that the mud that was in here is only still in solution because it's a little warm. Maybe it'll come out when it cools off in there, which I don't really want. But there's a lot of silver in that liquid, so I want to capture that. Ooh, my beaker's about full. Okay. So we got ooh, well over a liter here. Okay, let me get set up for, uh, okay, I don't know how well that's showing up, but as it's sitting there, that mud is coming out of solution again. 
I'm going to have to refilter this. There's some nastiness forming in there. I was afraid that would happen. So the liquid I just filtered into here had a lot of gold, it had a lot of silver in it, but it had a lot of something else too that's precipitating out of solution as it as it hits this cold liquid down here. So I'm going to have to refilter this and get that out of there. So I'm going to need a bigger flask too. I'll get the, get my bigger filter flask and refilter this. I guess I'll go back through this same filter since it's partly clogged. I should get a good clean filtrate. That's annoying. Now this is really starting to turn into a lot of work. I hope silver prices go through the roof. I told you this wasn't an economical way to get silver. Said that up front. Yeah, don't know what this crud is, but I don't want it mixed with my silver. All right, I'll be back when this is done. Okay, got a nice clean filtrate again, crystal clear, just pretty blue in color, and a filter full of mud again. It's interesting though, this time it's kind of a bronzy color. That's showing up, probably not. Let's see if I can focus better. Now if the color's showing up, it's got kind of a bronzy color to it, so. I don't know what in the world that stuff is. I wouldn't be surprised if phosphorus is involved somehow though. Also notice this right here. Look how black that's gotten in the time it's taken me to refilter this solution. So that's the way silver chloride behaves. This stuff, whatever it is, is not silver chloride. Okay, let me get set up to uh, cement out the silver. Finally, we'll get our prize um, after all this work. All right, and I gotta clean up this mess a little bit too. All right, we're ready to uh, cement our pure silver out of solution. So I've got this tall form beaker here and I've got a coil of copper wire in it. Now, this copper wire looks a little grungy because I've used it for this before in an earlier video to cement out some silver. But there's plenty of copper there. So this should work uh, again, probably several times more. I've got my GoPro going in, in time-lapse mode to try and catch the cementation happening, but this is a really concentrated solution of silver nitrate, so I don't know if slow-mo is even going to be needed. This might happen pretty quick. So here we go. Oh yeah, I see it happening already. Well, it's been about 20 minutes. I really hope it's showing up how much silver has accumulated in the bottom of that beaker. I can't really tell on the uh, viewfinder here, but there is a lot of silver accumulating in the bottom of that beaker. The, the coil is just covered a solid half inch thick all over with uh, cement silver. So this is working pretty good. We're getting a lot of silver. Well, it's been maybe an hour, and I've shaken the silver off the coil about three times now. I'm going to do it again. You can see how much, see the level of the silver that's accumulated in the bottom of this beaker. We should be getting an interesting time lapse off of the uh, GoPro. I'm going to leave this overnight before I do anything else with it and give all the silver in solution a chance to come out. And then I will filter the filter the silver out of the solution and we'll melt it down and make some bars. But that's a job for tomorrow at the earliest. Because this this just needs to keep going because every time I shake the silver off the coil it gets covered with it again. So there's still a lot of silver in solution that needs to come out. So I'll see you tomorrow.
All righty, let's get this silver into the funnel here, into the Buckner funnel. Now I know it's a, it's a strange perspective, it makes the Buckner funnel look like it's, it's so much bigger than the flask, but trust me, it's not. Just a matter of perspective. Okay, get this coil out of here and clean it off. Look how bright and shiny the copper is. Hope that's showing up. Wow. Get all the silver off of it. All right. Be able to use that again. Probably again and again. Let me get the pump going. And we'll filter this liquid off and catch the silver. This may take a while because all the little grains of silver are going to plug up the filter. It's going pretty fast at the moment. If it starts bogging down, I'll stop the camera and just show you the end result. Wow, there's a lot of silver in this speaker. I hope you can see that. Probably not. Okay. A lot of silver in there. Get this in the Buckner funnel, let the vacuum suck the water out of it. The water's got a lot of copper dissolved in it. Wow, that's a lot of silver. Hopefully I hit my target of a troy ounce. That'd be even better, huh? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rinse the silver and see if I can get as much of the copper out of it as I can, until the water stops flowing blue down here. there. It's pretty clear already. Yep. Take camera off tripod, give you a look at it. Got a whole bunch of pure silver in there. I'm just gonna let the uh, vacuum run for a while and uh, suck the moisture out of it so it dries it out some. And I'll get it, uh, scra I'll scrape it out of the, off the top of the filter in the funnel there into a beaker. And we'll be ready to melt it down and make some bars. Alrighty, I guess we're ready to melt down this silver and make some bars out of it. So I got everything I need here. I got my my little bar mold. I got a crucible. I've used this crucible for silver before. It's already seasoned and ready to go. Got my silver. Uh, got a uh, beaker of water to put the silver bars in to cool them off. The only potential fly in the ointment is I'm not sure I have enough acetylene to finish this. I'm getting low. So we'll see. If I run out of acetylene part way through, this will just have to be picked up another day. But I'll edit it all together and uh, make it one smooth process for you out there in YouTube land. 
Now my melting crucible is a little small and this silver is a little fluffy. So I'll probably have to melt it in a couple of charges here. How that works out. Okay. Uh, I've got to preheat my mold here. You don't ever want to pour metal into a cold mold. Even the slightest trace of moisture on there will cause a uh, steam explosion. It'll blow the molten metal all over the place, including all over you. Not a good scenario. So we'll get that preheating. Go, that's a little better. Get my gloves on. Get my goggles on. And we'll melt us some silver. Yeah, the acetylene pressure is kind of low. And on the other hand, this fluffy silver, silver melts pretty easy, so hopefully I've got just enough. Get one bar poured anyway, hopefully, before I run dry. If I do run dry, maybe I'll uh, try melting, uh, melting it with map gas. Maybe it'll melt with map gas. in there. blow the powder everywhere so I'm gonna be careful here sort of crud floating on top of the silver. I'll bet it's some of that mud. 
made it through. I'm trying to consolidate all the little balls of silver here into one. There's the first bar poured. Get the water off my pliers. Again, I'm consolidating all the little silver balls into one big one. Oops. Well, I missed. And I still got a little bit of silver in here. Well, what do you know? I did have enough, pro uh, enough acetylene. Got it done. I'm going to have to exchange that tank before I try to melt any more gold or silver. Pull this little piece here off. Put that back in the bowl. We got a little bit of silver left over. We got two little bars. And a little bit of silver left over in the crucible. All right. So, let me get those dried off and we'll weigh them up see how much silver we got okay let's see how much silver we recovered I got my calibration weight on there never hurts to check the calibration on your uh, on your scale so we're good there here's one little bar 10.97 grams here, here's another bar 29.48 here's a little button that was left inside the crucible so 30.08 grams now there's still a little bit of silver stuck in the bottom of the crucible and I noticed I guess I didn't see this with I with my goggles on there's still a little bit of powder silver in the bottom of this uh, beaker so I would say we came really 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 close to uh, my goal of 31.1 grams or a troy ounce of silver recovered not too shabby of course like I said up front this wasn't an economical way to get silver it was a little bit frustrating at times, but on the whole it was pretty fun. So, you know, if you can get that welding rod, or if you can get that brazing rod cheap, um, sure, make a little silver with it. Why not? I got one more little thing to show you before we wind up this video and wrap it up. Okay, here's a little bonus. There's always somebody in all my videos, when I'm recovering gold, when I'm recovering silver, they have to get into the comments and say, what about the copper? You're throwing away a lot of copper. That stuff's valuable. Well, yeah, it's kind of valuable. I mean, not so much compared to gold or silver, but... Well, here's what you do. Take your depleted solution after you get all of the silver out of it and just throw some scrap iron or scrap steel in there. Look at that. Same process again. The copper will cement out on the iron or steel. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a lot of copper down in the bottom of this beaker that's already cemented out. So that's how you get your copper back. Nice, clean, pure copper recovered from your waste solution. So, if you want to recover your copper, that's one way to do it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, whatever. Give it a thumbs up, a safety gloved thumbs up. Uh, give it a like, um, subscribe to see future videos, and press the little bell icon so you'll be notified when they come out. There's always new videos coming out, always doing interesting stuff. So, thanks for watching.
and have a good one. Keep it safe out there. Bye.